guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics Seminary here recording on Wednesday, July 24th. And we are still not home. Sam's still in Greece. I'm still on the Cape. Uh, so we have a pooled together pod. I mean, there's not content in general because everything's over, but it's really difficult when you can't really sit down and like figure everything out because neither of us are home. But we are here. Sam, how yeah. you doing? How's Greece? It's still hot. Still a lot of cats. Um I'll have more stories for later in the show. I'm trying to think. It's it's warm. A lot of a lot of sun out. It's good. Um it's fun. But yeah, fun show today. I'm sure we'll find mm-hmm. something to talk to everybody about. And uh <laughs> stay tuned. Subscribe, leave we'll a be, like. We'll be fine. Uh we can start with Joel Embiid, who gave us a free piece of content the other day. Shout out Joel. Thank you very much, sir. Um, he was on Drew Hanlon's podcast, and Drew Hanlon turned to him. I, I think I can probably find the clip. I don't know if it'll come through well because I'm not on my home Wi-Fi and I know Sam isn't either. So uh I'll try to play the clip and I'll Which apologize might be a good in thing advance. Today. Yeah, I guess. We'll see. Uh, apologies if the clip doesn't come through correctly, but I'll try to play it here. Joel Embiid was basically like mocked. Um by Drew Hanlon or like poke fun at the Drew Hanlon's uh, and beads and Tatum's trainer. And so they were, they were cracking jokes and this is what, this is what kind of went down. He gives me trouble about Jason. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got a super team. You know what I mean? Like if I, <laughs> if I had a super team too, I would win too. You know, I, mean, I, t- I tell him the same thing. Like, <laughs> well, well, you got like, a super team if, now. Coach. If I, if I go, if I go five for 20, like, we got blown you out. You guys don't know how much shit that. <laughs> and to my response to Joel Embiid saying that is, yes, <laughs> C- correct. <laughs> and I, I guess the difference is if Tatum does that, they still manage to win. But I think the Sixers have a better infrastructure in place now to help Embiid on the off nights. And uh, yeah, I, I mean he's not wrong. Like they had a that was probably the worst Philly team we've seen in a while last year. I would argue, like yes, yeah. compared sure. to recent years. Um, and so I get it. And then, I mean, realistically, it's just a credit to Brad Stevens. Dude, put four all-stars around his superstar, like goat. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's, that's what you're supposed to do. So, um, yeah, it is probably. funny though, <laughs> hearing this from a bead who like will put up a five for 20 game in a game seven and then be like, well, it's hard for me and James Harden to win when we have to play two on five, like just pull out all the excuses. Like, I don't know. Don't suck. Like he had a fantastic team in 2019. They lost the second round. Like never made it past the second round. They were supposed to beat Tatum and the Celtics. Tatum's rookie year. Uh, they lose in five. They lose in the ball. They lose in 2023. They've just been a sorry, a sorry team for years. Like they're they're just not a competitive threat in the playoffs. Yeah. And with him being the star, like. If borderline doesn't strike fear in anybody's hearts, because it's just this guy is gonna play his game, but it feel like a full team game. And you know, you can say a lot about well, they have the talent right now they don't take off season. So we're gonna see this is a big season for them. Yeah, I mean he's not wrong. Like the Celtics objectively had a better team than the Sixers this year, they probably, I mean, it's the closest thing to the super team in the league. It's the closest thing to a super team league is probably seen since the Warriors. Um, but again, that's just credit to Brad Stevens and it is what it is. And I, I mean, if Tatum or excuse me, a beat was making the point that Tatum was able to put, put up some of those performances in the playoffs and still win. Like, yeah, cause he's got good teammates. They did a good job of building around him. And it's that like, <laughs> it is what it is. I, I don't think there's any malice or, it, like yeah, like cool. I, I don't know. It doesn't well, really I think if people me. are gonna um, bitch about super teams. There should be like the context of <laughs> oh, this person left to go join a super team. I don't think instead he, of being... I don't think he was. I don't think he was bitching about a super team though. Like I don't think Abid was actively saying fuck this guy. The super team sucks. Like well, he, this is not, not how you're supposed to people win. People do. People do. Yeah, you but I, I feel like. Off. Sure, and but I feel like people are going to go out and bead for this when in reality this was probably just him 
making a half joke like god damn it look what these guys have to his trainer in a practice and then his trainer just said it on the air and now he's gonna get killed like that that doesn't seem like a fair line of thinking and i'm not saying you're you're doing that to Embiid, but people all over twitter are like dogging Embiid for this and i'm like i don't really think he necessarily did anything <laughs> like he's just talking like it is what it is and they for what's worth they do have a much better team heading into next season so we'll see what changes if anything knock on wood or uh for his sake but um i don't know it's fine. I don't really care. This, this comment didn't really mean anything to me. Uh, it, th this falls under your category. For me, this falls under your category of... Um... Go ahead. I don't care. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, I'll throw out the post. No, no, no. And, like, That's not what I was going to say. It was, it was people saying that, you know, Celtics have an easy path, which they did. But, like, oh, the team's so stacked. Like, they were discrediting Tatum and stuff. Like... Tatum didn't leave. He didn't go and join a team because he felt like he couldn't get it done. Like the Celtics took care of their star. Like that's what people want throughout the NBA. They want to see franchises put up, spend money, and actually put talent around the players that they draft and keep teams together instead of cheaping out, trading guys like Denver has done over the last year, two years now, where they just let guys walk in free agency because they don't want to pay. Instead, the Celtics put their money where their mouth is, brought in Porzingis, brought in Holiday, made very difficult decisions, won a championship, and then paid everybody. None of the talent around Tatum is like something that he cowered away, went and did, and left the Celtics because he felt like he couldn't win. Like They went through all the struggles, and they found a way together to get past it into the championship and to achieve the ultimate goal that everybody kind of had set out. So I don't think it's entirely fair for people to be pointing at him as like the only reason why they, they won is because the team's good or, you know, he, he was weak for having that team around him. Like, was it easier for Tatum because they had a talented team? Yes. But he was there for an entire career and like, he probably won some series. He shouldn't have won either. I feel like, I haven't seen that narrative a lot though. Like, I feel like I haven't seen a lot of people doing that. And that's all they were talking about the playoffs. I only if you go out looking for it, like the only people who were talking about that are the people who were on my say timeline. It. Yeah, but your timeline is catered to your haterade, brother. Like that, that's that's probably why no, it wasn't on my timeline. People well, crying well, well, it, on, it wasn't on, on my Celtics, timeline. Like feed, but it wasn't on my timeline. It wasn't on other people's timelines. Am I saying like I didn't see it? Other people like I haven't heard that from anybody else. Like on on Twitter on speed. You know what I'm saying? Like I, what are you talking I, about? We did pods all spring with people criticizing the Celtics, and it was ridiculous. I, I feel like the people who are saying that are the people who would say it like are the people who would make up an excuse to discredit it regardless of what the team looked like or what Tatum did like like that. I don't that, that doesn't mean anything. To me. I don't care what those people say like that doesn't mean like the, the, those guys if Tatum won with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown and Romeo Langford as the third best player, they would find a way saying, oh, it's easy. Uh, oh, this player got hurt. This happened like they, they would find a way to, to discredit it. And that like. That like whatever like I don't there's like a fly on the shoulder like who cares to me and, and I feel like I have like it, it feels like the general discourse of the actual people who I respect basketball opinions were like okay yeah this team was just nasty like okay this is fine like the the, the other people are the people who are going to like are the Heat fans who are gonna say you know screw the Celtics regardless or the Sixers fans are gonna say it doesn't mean anything you know what I'm saying like that doesn't really sure, matter the fan as much bases, to me versus like. Yeah, the talking heads were doing it too. Like that's what I'm like referencing. Like people with a big platform where people will watch were saying things like that, and then it trickles down to the other, you know, entities of people online. Now, I don't disagree with you. I don't think you should, especially as a Celtics fan. Now you shouldn't care about it. But just wanted to put it in like context. Like, well, he that the reason in the past why players have been criticized for being on super teams. I won't even say LeBron, like Durant. Durant leaves and joins the Warriors, and it's like the easiest route it feels like he could have chose. Well, yeah, he actually had to like pack up and leave OKC and quit on the franchise that they were trying to build something. Like the Celtics and Tatum didn't do that. So I don't think the mm -hmm. super team criticism or like discredit is fair in that situation.
Sure. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to have these conversations because I don't really care about the discourse. And so I try my best to get into it. <laughs> I just got to do just something like, yes, yeah, I know. For us to talk about. I know. I just I, I, I can't. It doesn't mean anything to me. And so I tried my best to to be in on the conversation, <laughs> excuse me, conversation. And I just it flops. I can't I can't do it, man. I don't know how to talk about it. <laughs> it just goes right. Out. It doesn't register on my brain of importance. Um, what well, does register? as important is the Celtics took the two championship trophies from this year and 2008 to go visit Bob Cousy, uh, in Worcester. Um, and that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Wick Grosbeck, uh, and Jeff twist, who is Celtics PR extraordinaire, absolute legend, uh, went to Worcester, brought the trophies to see Mr. Bob Cousy, um, in his home. And it's just, it's just kind of awesome. Like it just rocks. It just, they brought the trophies to see Bob Guzzi. And before the playoffs, um, he said, like, the last thing I want to see is the Celtics win another championship. They did it. And then another quote that's in here um, in the article, which the article was written by, I, I want to get it correctly, Bill Doyle of the Worcester Telegram and Gazette. So shout out, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Um, said Kuzi was relieved when the Mavericks won the Western Conference because he thought the Celtics would beat them easily and he wouldn't have to stay up to 1130 on game nights to watch the end of games. He was convinced that Drew Holiday and Derek White would be able to defend Kyrie and to a lesser extent, Luka Doncic. And uh, you know what, Bob Kuzi, you're damn right they were. <laughs> so this was this was fun to see on the timeline. Bob Kuzi knew more than the talking heads and sports books did. Um, yeah, this is cool that they went and kind of paid respect to Kuz. Kuz, by the way, I don't know if you saw this tidbit, yeah. is going to get a uh, championship ring because oh. Wick explained hmm. it as he's been a part of every single title the team has won ever. So, Kuzi, man, just getting all the rings. W for Kuzi. Kuzi, um, you know, longtime Celtics legend. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become a part of the Prize Picks community today. With Prize Picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000 while watching Team USA rack up the gold medals this summer. You can make a Prize Picks lineup of players across basketball, soccer, tennis, golf, and more in as little as 60 seconds. Just pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and you're locked in. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Sam and I use Prize Picks all throughout the NBA playoffs as the Celtics were making their run. If you guys tuned into the pregame show, you saw it. We like Drew Holiday blocks. We always pick Jason Tatum to get a dunk. That was a lock for us. And we always picked less on the opposing stars points. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Also a part of the Doyle article, we find out there are some holes in this, but we do find out it's supposed to be Miami on opening night for the ring ceremony playing against Boston at home. Yes. Now, many are saying the season is supposed to tip off on October 22nd. The date that is referenced in the article is October 27th. So I think there may be some confusion. Maybe the writer just got the date wrong. But it sounds like it's going to be Miami for opening night. So all, all the Heat fans will be very sad to see our boys getting their rings right in front of everyone's faces yeah it, it was rumored october 27th opening night against miami would be banner night you saw the heat fans on twitter uh or people everywhere crying or whatever about it which was funny i think i saw a meme on instagram or something um but then mark D'Amico tweeted out the only Celtics game dates that have been announced are, are preseason games. So that makes me feel like, okay, maybe not October 27th. And like you said, it's rumored to start on the 22nd. So that feels a little, I don't want to say fake, but it feels like it might not be necessarily the, the definitive date. Um, I also feel like there's better teams to do it against than the heat. <laughs> Excuse me. I, I guess it makes sense. Uh, I'd rather than play the Mavs, have them do it in front of Dallas, but I guess that, that hasn't always happen. been the thing. I know. Um, 
I guess the Heat Philly the is a good sense. one. The Knicks are a good one. Philly would be a fine one. But I think Miami has like been the team they've gone back and forth with the most yeah. over the course of this climb. I guess. So it. I guess yeah. it. It isn't a team that like I think either of us think of as a major rival, just because there was a weird dip before they came up and were this Jimmy Butler team and like the bubble was a very weird situation for them to have had their first meeting. Like the stakes didn't feel as high because there weren't fans in the arena. Like the emotion wasn't there. So then, you know, you've had multiple battles since then and it feels a little bit more muted, but all of the the history will tell you that it is a big time rival. So good choice. If that is the case. It's definitely a rivalry. I mean, I guess it makes some sense, too, because they did beat them on the run, which I guess I kind of forgot about. They did. It felt kind of useless because Jimmy wasn't healthy. But, um, yeah, okay, I guess it is the, the team that makes the most sense. And it'll be a fun opening night game anyways, if it is the truth, because we don't actually know for sure. And uh, My guess is research. that Wick <laughs> told Bill Doyle that. Or, or, like, he heard it being at the meeting between the two of them. You know what I mean? Like, it might have been discussed there. Yeah. Maybe October 27th is the weird part though. Um, because that's not, I agree. I don't think it's gonna be the start. So, I mean, if you say uh, it out loud, 22nd anyways. and 27th sounds somewhat similar, so it's possible there was a it's true. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to get into the weeds of, of conspiracy, I like that. Um, cool. I think that does it for Celtics. We have no emails today, so no email section. You guys email nothing? us at HPTC pod. Wow. Nothing, no emails, zero. Did you do um, them on Monday? I did them when I was by myself. Okay, yeah, good. I read them out. Good, 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 good. <clears throat> yeah, no, we're caught up. It's just no one no one sent us emails. So send us emails at hbtcpod at gmail.com. We'll read them on the pod. But uh, we can jump over to the NBA section here. We're not going to do a super long pod today because Samson Grease and I'm on the Cape more vacation. We're doing stuff. But we wanted to cover everything, and we're still giving the daily videos out. But um, the Knicks extended Tom Thibodeau for a three-year contract. He'll be under contract with the Knicks through the 27-28 season. I wrote it in the sheet. This is the most obvious extension. And if I had to place a bet that one current head coach would be with their organization for the rest of their careers that wasn't already on that path, i.e. Pop, Spo, and, and Steve Kerr, it, it'd be Tom Thibodeau. Like, he 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 screams Nick for life at this point. Like, he turned the organization around to a degree. He, he brought them back to the playoffs. He's brought them back to consistently winning. They built good teams around him. And honestly, like, he's done a phenomenal job getting the most out of his talent. Cause real like Sam, if I told you five years ago that a team of Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo would be a, a legitimate and Mikhail Bridges would be a legitimate playoff team. You'd be like laughing in my face. So he's done a great job of getting the most out of the right. talent in his roster and, and, and sort of developing them. And obviously credit goes to those players as well. But um, this, this was an obvious move Tibbs in New York. Yeah. I, I think that, the Tibbs signing was always going to be an obvious one. The funny thing about Tibbs on the Knicks is he has been such a catalyst for their success, but at the same time, it feels like he brought them to the downfall in the postseason by just running everybody into the ground for as long as he did. Now, towards the end, there wasn't much of a choice with all the injuries that had piled up before Game 7. But on the way there, just everybody was running on empty, and he was – Pedal to the floor, foot to the floor, do you want to say? Still can't believe we saw Tibbs in Vegas just hanging out with his boys, standing in the, the hall that. of uh, the encore. And if you had not pointed it out, neither me or Bobby would have noticed that it was Tibbs. I just completely disregarded the group, looked like a bunch of middle aged white guys that had no idea what was going on that week. And we're probably just chatting about how there's so many tall guys around. Yeah, I discarded it at first too. Then I took a closer look. I was like, "Wait a second, that's fucking that's Tom Thibodeau. What the hell is happening?" I was like, "What's going uh, on here?" <clears throat> but yeah, Tibbs, Tibbs in. I was about to say Tibbs in Vegas. Tibbs in New York makes all the sense. Um, good for them. Uh, they they've got a really not a team, man. Tibbs, not a what? Tall, not tall. No, <clears throat> no. How tall do you think he is, Tom Thibodeau? I bet he's taller than you think. Five, five, six nine. two, six two. Really. <clears throat> mm. I don't know. Maybe I think am I frozen or are you frozen? Yeah, sixty. I mean, he played in. He played at a high enough level to be tall enough. He was played yeah, at. Uh, he played at Salem State. So, is that Mass? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Really? He, he's a New 10? England guy. 
He's from Connecticut. He's one of us. Oh, I didn't kinda. know that. Yeah, Connecticut. What part kinda, of Connecticut? New Britain. I don't New know Britain, where that's Connecticut. At. Yeah, Con- Connecticut's kind of. Would you agree that Connecticut's the outcast of New England? I I would put it on the. No, it's the, it's the lowest. I think Connecticut should be opinion. two states. Eastern Connecticut is more New England. Yeah. Western Connecticut is more New York, Mid Atlantic. But it's like my not. dad grew it's up still... in Mystic, which is Eastern, so it's like pretty yeah. close to Rhode Island. Respect. That half of Connecticut is fine, but the fact that there is two halves puts it in the five spot for me for New England states. It's it's bottom. They should they should secede from each other. They I agree. Should split. I agree. I saw a map on. I forget where I saw it. I remember on Facebook or whatever while I was like posting a short and it's like map of Red Sox slash Yankees fans. And they did it by like broadcast channels or like, like YouTube or Google mm-hmm. searches or whatever. And it was literally like right across like Red Sox, like Yankees. Like it was, you could see the line. Um, Real. Oh yeah. <clears throat> rank, rank, the the rank the New rank England the New states. Rank the New England states. For me. states. Yeah. Massachusetts <laughs> one. Respect. I, I was going to oh, respect like you putting Rhode Island first. I, I know. I was just gonna, I was going to respect you. Like if there was a New England first. capital, it would be them. Rhode yeah. Island, too. Yes. Agree. This is where it gets wishy washy. This is where See, it gets I'm inclined little... to say Connecticut because it's close mm. to Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Like it's in that trio. <laughs> but because we just said it's no. halved, I hate Connecticut. I think number number three is then New Hampshire. Yeah, Four, I mean, five Connecticut, six Vermont. Oh, see, I disagree. I, I, I go mass, mass one, Rhode Island two. I think New Hampshire and Vermont can flip flop at three and four, uh, and then Maine, then Connecticut. Mm. See, the problem with New England is there should be five states, but Connecticut should but be Maine, two states. No, but Connecticut Maine has should be the two minor states. league sports teams. Eh, Maine's. But you, you got to think about Maine as a whole, though, because Maine is also like I went to Maine like one time or whenever I go to Maine, all I see is like a broken down barn and a broken down car garage every two miles. Like it, it, mm. it's the south of the north, effectively, in my opinion. They got um, beaches. They, I, the the mm. north of Maine is the south of the north. Yes, exactly. Um, New England should be five states, but Connecticut should be two. And then New Hampshire and Vermont should just combine into one big state because they're the same. It's it's the same thing. It's just different brands. It's the same. <clears throat> Anyways, um, next thing, the Pacers extended it, Andrew Nemhart to a three-year, $59 million deal. Couldn't get that 20 mil average annual value. They said, Bargain. fuck this guy. Um, great, no, great deal for, for Andrew Nemhart for real, though. Um, Andrew Nemhart is how old? Let's see. Uh, 24 years old still. Three years, 59 mil. Could he get just under 20 mil a season? Obviously, <laughs> excuse me, popped off in the playoffs against the Celtics. I did hear an interesting theory, though, that maybe Halliburton's not as good as people think because any point guard should succeed in the Pacers system, which I think is a little stupid, but I I, I think it's funny because Andrew Nemhard did pop off. TJ McConnell plays well when he's the starter there, and then and then Halliburton. But for real, though, Nemhard, damn good player, should probably start next to Halliburton making this much money, but I can see a world where they'd rather him be the six man. Um, but yeah, good, good contract for both sides. Yeah. Nemhard, maybe the best player the Celtics play in the playoffs. Consistently Perhaps. good. Consistently a pain in the ass. I mean, he was otherworldly in the Pacers series. He was the reason why all of those games were so tight. The Halliburton thing is crazy, but there's been people on Twitter who have tracked his minutes on Team USA, and he has just slowly fallen out of the rotation altogether while Derek White has slowly built up a little bit of minutes for himself. So maybe there is some truth to the Halliburton isn't that great theory, but that would be an insane boost he's getting from coaching no, and no. team chemistry. <laughs> it, it's a half half joke. Um, but for real, though, good deal for the Pacers to get them hard locked up on this. Um, it does feel like last year was a little fluky for them. And so you kind of want to see them take some swings and they haven't necessarily done it. Uh, they did just, as we're recording this and talking about it, Sam, bring back the most mm. important guy on the team though. Did you see, I assume that's right. Um, James Johnson, <laughs> Mr. James Celtics Johnson. Should have brought him in. They should have. That'd be funny. <laughs> they just have an enforcer at the end of the bench. 
South Bucks were one of three. Attention. If he checks into a game at like the garden, like they see the fan base sees him like get off the bench, like, oh fuck. <laughs> He's coming in to ruin somebody's day. Let's go. Tenassis checks in, James Johnson checks in at the same time. Electric. Phenomenal. The entire did you hear did you hear Jeff Teague talk about Thanasis on his podcast? I saw that there was a clip. I didn't listen to it. So I know the reason I'm telling you this because I know you respect Jeff Teague and you like Jeff Teague a lot. I think he's a really good podcaster. Like he's one of the few guys. Like, yeah, like, exactly. And he was basically like in 2021 when we went down 0-2 in the in the finals to the Suns. Like Thanasis had COVID and. Giannis couldn't play like basically every game. He was like, every time we showed up anywhere, Giannis was just like, where's TA, you know, where's the Nassus? Where, where's my brother? Like, where is he? Where is he? And he's like, couldn't focus. And so they brought the Nassus back early. And Jeff T's like, I saw him in the huddles. I saw him on the bench. Like I realized like actually how important the guy is. And then obviously they won four straight in the series. Like I, I, I know it's a joke because he's in the league and genuinely should not be in the league. Not, not an NBA player. Like seriously. I wonder but, if it's going to happen with Bronny. <clears throat> like he's gonna Shut up. he's gonna come back from like an injury but, and the Lakers will go on a 10 game win streak. No, no, no. But but realistically, like as much as I hate it and you hate it and people mock it, like that genuinely is probably a really important thing for the Bucks. And it was interesting to see hear it uh, and see it from somebody who was on the bench and in the locker room, like how important it was. And I thought that was I thought it was fascinating because it, the funniest part was like Oh, he had COVID, but then he was in the locker room and he like recovered magically, quote unquote. But then they put him on his own fucking parade float. Like, guys, he already he already gave us all COVID. Like, you're gonna separate him for the parade. Like, let's be real here. Uh, but I thought I thought that was an interesting they should uh, tidbit. Go back and review Milwaukee's championship because they clearly <laughs> broke some protocols. That would be <laughs> crazy if. All of a sudden, like you get like a Woj notification that the NBA is investigating the Bucks 2021 COVID protocols. It'd be so funny, man. Um, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. I remember my dad taking me to Fenway Park as a kid, getting to watch David Ortiz and Dustin Pedroia sitting in the Green Monster and taking in all there is to love about the iconic ballpark. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Taking a look at my Game Time app right now, I see plenty of great deals to watch my favorite sports teams and my favorite tickets to Noah Khan. You guys know that's my favorite artist. I even used it while in Las Vegas for Summer League to get tickets to a women's basketball game. Some of my favorite features in the Game Time app include letting me see what the price is going to be with fees included. It makes so much easier to take a look and see what the actual price I'm going to pay is. Also, you get to see exactly where you are sitting. It's a great way to know exactly the experience you're going to get. I also love the fact that you can get great last minute deals. Save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, or anything else. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. That last NBA thing um, KCP went on the Draymond Green podcast, the Draymond Green mm, show. Yes. Uh, and said that the Nuggets were gassed in the playoffs. Said a couple things. We'll talk about both. That both went around on Twitter a little bit. <clears throat> but the quote was, uh, let's see. He said, we had no gas. We felt like the Lakers should have beat us. We were just down every game. Like, just like we grinded so hard to get to that point, blah, 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 after the championship that we just, we, we couldn't do it at that point. Um, <clears throat> I'll play the clip if it, if it doesn't lag. Uh, and we can listen to it, but I thought it was interesting. It was weird. You know how, like, towards the playoff, guys get their rest. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's where we spent most of, you know, our energy and, like, like time, you know what I'm saying, trying to get that first place, you know what I'm saying? Playing catch-up. And playing catch-up. And then, like, we get to the playoffs. I, we have no gas, you know. I, we felt like the Lakers should have beat us. Like, we were down every, <laughs> they should have. every game. They definitely you know should. At least like at least ten to like I mean the highest maybe but what twenty something? Like I like, then just 
taking that energy, you know, using it there. So like, it was a lot that that went into that season, you know, that uh, we wish we could have, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> Trayvon going, they should have. <laughs> that was the funniest part to me. Lakers that, fans that are great. all like feeling vindicated today. They're like, see, even he said it. Like Lakers were the toughest opponent that they faced two years in a row. Hardest was it a five game series? So f- toughest five yeah. game series, toughest sweep back to back years. They even think that the Lakers should have won. <laughs> oh man. Mm. Well, they clearly no too much credit. weren't gassed when it mattered because they came out on top in all those close games and they executed well. Yeah. I don't know, man. Um, I feel like the Nuggets will be back next year. I think you could see a leap from like the Chris Browns and and, and um, I'm blanking. Peyton Watson. Um, <clears throat> it sucks to run so Holmes confused. got hurt. I think he would have been good for them. Uh, why? You called him Chris Brown instead of Christian Brown. And I was like, wait. Oh, <laughs> Christian Brown. Sorry. My, my fault. My fault. Um, and his name isn't spelled Brown. It's yeah. spelled Braun. So I know. I was like, I know, confused. I know. It is Brown, though, I think. I think it is Brown. Um, it is. Anyways. Uh, also, KCP and Draymond talked about the Clippers in the bubble. And they basically said they heard the Clippers give up up three one they just wanted to go home which is like it's funny but i get it like i I know i know you gotta be mad but i'm not gonna sit here and act like like that's so lame of them like screw these guys like i'd want to go home (laughs) frankly personally me would want to go home wouldn't want to be there i want to go home every day i want to go back to my wife and kids Uh, i I can't exactly (laughs) i can't exactly fault them too too much but uh, it is that is a, a unfortunate thing to come out, uh, especially considering that the Kawhi and Paul George Clippers didn't really achieve too, too much in their tenure. Well, together. the thing is, like before that season, there was so much hype. Like when they brought in Kawhi, Kawhi was coming off his Raptors run where everybody was gassing him up as like the best player. And then you get Paul George to go along with that. Like, it's like, oh, man, like Clippers might be here. They might be doing all right for themselves. And then they go out sad in the bubble. And from that point on, they never really recovered. Kawhi continuously got hurt. I believe Paul George was hurt, too, in the conference finals run that they made. They just never had health again. So if I'm a Clippers fan, to hear that my team gave up when they had a clear advantage. like This isn't like a team giving up 0-3 down. Like They were literally about to win a series, and then they were like, I've had enough. We're we're all done playing. I I would be yep. none too pleased. Mm-hmm. Also, another quick NBA thing before we get done. Chris Haynes just got a scoop, Sam. Um, NBA announces that Warner Bros. Discovery did not match the terms uh, of Amazon Prime and are agreeing on a long term arrangement with Amazon. So TNT not back, as I stated on the last pod. Um, yikes! I've had enough of <laughs> Amazon all stuff. <laughs> hopefully it's, it's, it all gets solidified too soon and then it'll be done it's gonna be fun to see like um, the new broadcast packages and see how everything looks but i'm sick of hearing about the race for the rights i just don't care yeah it, give it, me the it's, season it's worth it it's worth it all right sam ratless time mm. hit me what you got ratlist is the bed in this fucking hotel room no I, shit, I'm about to rat list the bed here too. That's crazy. <laughs> well, we're going to rat list the beds for different reasons. Uh, so both me and my girlfriend have slammed our knees on the bed frame as we're walking across the room. This bed frame is like a big yeah. slab of stone and the corner protrudes oh, past I'm, the mattress. I'm gone. What a what a change this is. I made it back. I'm so used to it being me, I thought it was me. I know. I, I didn't have the Wi-Fi symbol either, so I thought it was you too. I'm no, back. you just went into like the circle, and I was like, oh, shit, I lagged. <laughs> so I started talking into my mic, and I muted it. And I was like, oh, shit, there he goes. Uh, interesting. Post, uh, actually like, maybe, maybe I'll leave it in. Maybe it's funny for listeners. I heard you hate your knee on your bed frame, and that's not fun. Yeah, hit my knee on the bed frame now three times on the show. 
Yeah, not fun. Uh, on the show. Oh, like as you've been recording. No. No, I've said oh, it three oh, times oh. now. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you said you did it three times. I'm like, that's impressive. You've been sitting down. It must be a big bed for <laughs> Um, I rat list in my bed, uh, or I am rat listing my bed because it moves. My bed's on wheels. Can't sleep. <laughs> can't can't do it. I like how, can't what, sleep? what do you want me to do? Bro, every time I adjust, I, I can't adjust. Like I can't like turn over. I can't I can't like not against a wall. You know, move stuff over. No, it's just it it's it just floats. Like I just roll. I just roll everywhere. It's terrible. I can't sleep. Mattress isn't particularly great. And so I got I, I had to be up for golf this morning at like 7 30 early. So I got into bed at like 12, 12 30. Did not fall asleep till 4 30 in the morning. I, terrible. It, un, 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 undoable. I can't do it. I took a nap on the couch when I got home today. Uh, and the couch isn't very comfortable either. So it's been uh not, everyone's not bed great. on wheels. <clears throat> no, just my fucking bed. How did you end up with the wheelie bed? There's no other great options. It, it's less of it's less of I could choose a different room, but the the other options are the master bedroom, which is my mom. So I'm not like my mom and, and my stepdad. So I'm not getting that one. The other two rooms are bunk beds. So I would just smack the shit out of my head every morning, which don't really feel like doing that. And then the other two beds are in the attic and I want to go to the attic. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just, I just took the, the, the wheel bed. Be okay. No, it's also like I like this house. So like the way this vacation house is, we've been here for four years in a row. Um, mm -hmm. Is there's like two houses. Like this side is its own little house, and the other side is its own little house. And so this side has been just me and my sister's side um, for the past four years, and it's been just kind of the way we've done things. And it was originally our side because we both had significant others. But then, since the years this. have gone on, yeah, since the years have gone on, we, I, she, well, she does still, but a different one, and I don't mm -hmm. anymore. But I just, I just, we just kept the, the same rooms, um, and yeah, but my bed's on wheels. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Rat list is, um, the mm. man. There's so many fucking hills here. I thought you were about so to say, there's so many fucking cats here. I was like, damn, you turned no, on the cats. That's a good thing. I like the cats. <laughs> mm -hmm. But so many hills. Like, I went running today. I had nowhere to go. I had to, like, do laps around like, I a little saw, area because I, I, I saw couldn't do it. Like, I saw your Instagram story saying, like, I, how did I end up on a mountain? What just happened? <laughs> yeah, so she got lost this morning. Yeah. Because... So I have service on my phone because my mom flies internationally as a flight attendant. So she, like our whole family plan is like pretty good to go if we're somewhere, but she doesn't have international service. So she's just out there trying to get back. And she's like, yeah, how did I end up up here? I was like, oh my gosh. But yeah, just pretty much that. I wanted to run into like the little port town that is on this island, but to get there, you have to climb a hill, decline a hill, climb another hill. Like, it's not worth it. <laughs> the The amount of energy I would have to expend, I would be dead like a mile into the run. You can't do it. So I just ran around my little area here. Who knows what I'll do tomorrow? Maybe I'll just do laps around the little pool. They don't have a treadmill in the gym. <clears throat> That's tough. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what I should rat list. Uh, I've had a good vacation. Anti ratless outdoor shower. I'm a fan. I I, I like it. I, like I'm, a real I'm, shower, or like when you come back from yeah. the beach. It it's like this house has an outdoor shower. Like but it's our, you like, use a real shower. Yeah, I'll just take a shower in the outdoor shower. Okay. It's nice. Feels it's great. Right. I enjoy. I took a shower for like forty minutes, forty five minutes the other night. I was just tired and I just sat in the shower. It was great. It felt nice. I, I was it was awesome. In somebody's water. <laughs> Yeah, not my water. Hey, he's not mine. Not my brother. Water. Not my money. <laughs> not my uh, money. Rat list. <clears throat> rat list the accordion kit. So, on <laughs> on this island, there's like a strip of restaurants near the seawall, and all of them have outdoor seating. All of the outdoor seating is next to each restaurant, like it's across the street. And yesterday we were sitting eating, and this kid comes over with an accordion. He's like playing music. And he like kind of come. He's like he's got to be like eight or nine. He's not very old. 
he comes up to your table. He just like will like look at you. And I felt bad that I didn't like give him like a little bit of like coins yesterday or whatever. So why well, he does it? It was he tried to scam you or his brother came up today. And I give him, I, I'm like, okay, like I have some change. Like, here's here's my change. And he's like, no, I want five euros. <laughs> five euros? I just gave you money. He, I didn't give you anything yesterday. What do you want five? I should have thrown him in the fucking water. Did you give him five asshole. euros? No, he kept going, please, five euros. And I was like, I don't have five euros. He's like, I can see the five euros in your wallet. I was like, I'm not <laughs> giving it to you. <laughs> I, you know what? Respect that you sta- stood your ground because I would have broken. I would have just given him the five euros. <laughs> I felt bad, but I was like, I gave you money. Like, don't <laughs> don't ask me for more money. I could have given you nothing, and you could have just fucked off. Don't break my balls for how much money I gave. That's the game in Europe. That's what like they're scammers. That's what they do. Like, I, I'm. I, I don't, told I you about nowhere. in London, where yeah. the the kid came up to me, or like the woman. I forget who it was, but she was like, the kid's hungry. And I had three donuts. And I was like, okay, do you want one? And he was like, no, I don't like those flavors. I was like, I guess you're not that fucking hungry. <laughs> I mean, that's the game. I know in Paris they have people that come up and say like, oh, I'll be your tour guide. Oh, here's a map, whatever. And then they give it to you. And then they'll just be like, okay, 10 bucks. And you'll be like, no. And they'll be like, you already took it, 10 bucks. And they just like scam you out of taking your shit. Um, but I gave him man. money. He didn't I give know. me anything. I know. I felt bad for him because he was walking around all that yesterday. I was like, okay, like I'll give him a little bit of change. Like give him some affirmation that he's doing something worth his time. He's like 10. He's playing an accordion. And he's, he's as the nerd. Hey, you want to give me more money? He wanted five euros, man. He wanted it. He's a hustler. Should have gave him a free swim. <laughs> um. I think that's all I got. I don't really have anything else. If I'm having a fine vacation, uh, I'm sure we'll have more stuff when we get down, um, done with everything. But uh, you got anything else? No, I got nothing else. We'll call it there. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to How About Them Celtics on YouTube and follow us on the pod platforms. Uh, I'll let Sam wrap it up. Hey, thank you very much for listening and watching. Like Jack said, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and comment. If you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We'll be back in full swing once we're back from vacation, but we're still coming at you with content every morning at 5 a.m., whether it's full pods, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, game recap when the season's on, the morning after each game, or other videos in between. We've got you covered. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple. If you follow us there, all pods and recaps will be in your feed. Leave a five-star view. Appreciate that. You can email us, hbtcpod at gmail.com is the address for that. We love to hear from you. We love your takes. We love your rat list. Again, hbtcpod at gmail.com is the email address for that. The socials are at How About Them Seas for Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Facebook's the name of the podcast. Our streams are there. They're on YouTube. They're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's NBA. Mine is at Sam LaFrance. It's at Brooks. Bye.